Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the 10 minute chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. And you can see here I've drawn some trend lines here. Uh, we're rising with a series of three trend lines. Uh, we fell back today uh, with the uh, testimony of Chairman Bernanke and uh, that's going to be the main story of the night. Uh, the stock market had a great rally and uh, silver sold off. You can see that silver is starting to bounce. Nevertheless, uh, we're above all of these key volume points. You can see the volume today wasn't significant. So uh, the next point we need to get through is going to be 29 and a half. You can see that was the big drop off point and that was the uh, rally failure here. So that's the level we're watching closely and of course the 2830 level is going to be the level that uh, we have to break below if we're going to go and test that 26. So we'll be watching both those levels very closely. Now on to the main story. There's just so much to say on this. Uh, first before we get into it uh, I want to show you the uh, chart here of federal spending versus median household income. Now there's a million charts I can show you of how this thing is completely out of control uh, but you can see that uh, the median household income is pretty much flat and actually falling since about 2000. This is going to be your taxpayer. Uh, the, now the amount that the government is spending of course is, is that hockey stick. It's just going straight up and uh, it, it is unsustainable. Uh, we're having the debate about the sequester that's coming up and you'll see in uh, Mr. Bernanke's testimony he warns us of how dangerous this sequester could be. Of course it's only about a two and a half percent cut but uh, that could damage the economy according to Mr. Bernanke. Uh, now I wanted to show you the uh, list of speakers here or questioners here. I'm just going to cover one of them. Uh, the other one that was very good was Sean Duffy, and uh, that's covered on Zero Hedge. Uh, and uh, that's a very interesting one uh, where he's questioned about uh, Mexican pottery classes and shrimp on treadmills and Obama phones. And uh, Bernanke's point is essentially that uh, uh, it's not as good to uh, cut things across the board as it is to cut things that are uh, uh, wasteful, I guess we should say. But uh, then again, uh, Bernanke has never told us what is wasteful. So I think uh, probably the best way to sum this up would be the comment by C Dad here on Zero Hedge. Keep it up, Tyler. From start to finish, this particular Humphrey Hawkins gathering is literally a bonanza of Bernanke slip-ups, confessions, and flat-out BS. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that I'm not hearing more on the mainstream media on this subject. Really? You're surprised? But I expect more in the coming days. A total and complete disaster for Mr. Bernanke. And it really was. So let's listen to the C-SPAN uh, questioning by uh, Ms. Bachman out of Minnesota. And uh, you'll just see uh, a sample of uh, Bernanke's demeanor, and this is quite telling. Bachman for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Chairman Bernanke, for being here today. I was reading your testimony, and thank you for giving it, and especially on page 7 and 8. On page 7, you talked about the sequestration and the impact of the sequestration and your concerns about that impact currently on the short term and the economic drag that that could bring about. And then on page 8, you talked about the fact that at some point down the road, we have to deal with our current debt and our current overspending. And so, and you had also said in your comments before us that we need to align our solutions with the problem meaning I take it that the spending reduction shouldn't happen today. They should wait until tomorrow when we really start to have problems. And we'll stop so drinking that tomorrow. How That's you when we'll stop. That? Yes or no? I didn't say we have to get rid of the spending cuts today, but just more gradual introduction right. okay. and combine so, with the longer term measures. So <laughs> let me ask just some very quick kind of technical answers is what I'm looking for. 
What was the United States deficit last year? Uh, I have it right here. It was um, 1.09 trillion dollars. 1.09 trillion. And what is what was our total national debt for last year? Or currently, what's about our current? About 11 trillion. And what is our current total national debt this year? Uh, it's currently about, I think, about 11 and a half trillion. I, I have to check. It's about not 16 and a half trillion. That includes the 16 trillion includes uh, intra intragovernmental debt like the Social Security Trust Fund, but debt held by the public, as opposed to debt held between different parts of the government, is about 11 and a half trillion. So you're saying that the debt is 11 and a half trillion, and what are the unfunded net liabilities? They're very large. Um, <laughs> particularly in the Medicare area. I don't have a number, uh, but they're probably some greater than the actual um, uh, official debt held by the public. And how much debt do we buy every day from the Treasury, from the Federal Reserve? Every day? Um, about one and a half, about one and a half billion. About one and a half the billion. So is it true that without the Fed purchases of our debt from the Treasury, would we be able to continue the spending level without that? Yes, you could. As I said before, the Fed only owns about 15 percent of the outstanding U.S. government debt. Um, where would we go? If we didn't have the Fed buying that debt, where would we go? Our, our debt is in great demand. Uh, <laughs> foreigners, wanna, foreigners hold about half of it. Um, people think of U.S. Treasury debt as a safe haven, as a secure investment. <laughs> and, that's why, is that why um, you have to buy so much? Notwithstanding what that is doing, that's why um, we can sell it uh, at, low, at low interest rates. <laughs> so, so the Fed wouldn't need to be buying all these treasuries then. We could find other buyers for our debt. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> so then why are we doing it? To keep rates a little bit lower to help support housing, <coughs> automobiles, and other parts of the economy that need more support. But if there's other buyers, why the Fed? to get rates a little bit lower than they otherwise would be. So if my 18-year-old daughter was spending 40% more than what my husband and I were giving her, and she didn't do that just this month, but she did it next month and the next month and the next month, and she finally my husband and I said, we're just not going to bail you out anymore. We're just not going to continue to finance that overspending that you're doing. And she said to me, mother, um, we, need to, uh, we need to align our solution with the problem. In other words, you need to keep giving that, me that money because it's really not a problem yet. I would say I think you have a problem today. And the reason why I would say that is because the analogy with the federal government, in January of 2007, our debt was $8.67 trillion. That debt today is closer to 16 and a half trillion you, with the intra-government debt according to your calculation. Do you think that's a problem that in six years we've gone from 8.67 trillion to 16 and a half trillion? Certainly it's a problem and that's why I think it's important to have measures to bring it down over time. But you said we need to align <laughs> the solution with the problem. It seems to me we've got a big problem and I'll tell you why. When I was home this last week and talking to a lot of women they were telling me, I don't get this. Gasoline at Christmas time was two ninety nine a gallon. Now it's four dollars a gallon. They said I can't keep up with the price price increase. No, there's no the inflation. Store. And we just got our health insurance premium and it's going to be three hundred dollars a month more than what it was. And so all I want to say, Mr. Chairman, is that that what I'm the hearing from people is that your your time is up. You started to ask him about inflation. So this is, uh, in all honesty, this is a madman. Uh, he's absolutely a madman in charge of the central bank. Here is a chart of the monthly nearby gasoline contract. So here's what she was talking about here. Uh, we're approaching uh, all-time highs in gas prices. You can go out there. Uh, we're coming up to $4 a gallon for gasoline. Uh, but uh, we need to print just a little bit more money. Now, let's look at this chart from Zero Hedge. Uh, the 
interview yesterday uh, in Humphrey Hawkins, uh, Bernanke was confronted by one of the congressmen as being the most dovish of the Fed chairman since World War II, and he countered that he has the best inflation fighting record uh, of any of the chairmen. So I give you this chart. This is a chart of commodity prices from 1960 to 2011 and you can see that the Bernanke era here starting in roughly 2004-2005 uh, we have an explosion of prices across the board uh, I think the top one here is gold but uh, for, for Bernanke to claim that uh, his policies are not resulting in inflation because he's rejiggering the numbers uh, it's just it's beyond belief that he can say that with a straight face and of course you can hear all through the testimony of yesterday and today I encourage you to listen to all of it uh, his voice is shaking uh, he's uh, fibbing and fudging and uh, he knows he's in uh, deep deep doo-doo because uh, he he's made a gigantic mess he's the equivalent of the bartender who continues to pour another drink to the uh, nearly passed out and intoxicated uh, patron who's about ready to get in a car and go and get into a gigantic car crash. So it's absolutely absurd that uh, Bernanke is justifying uh, this type of behavior by the Congress and when the Congress even talks about cutting uh, again the sequestration which I've argued that there should be sequestration I've argued that every single item in the federal budget should be cut by 50 percent across the board that's the only way we could possibly balance the budget uh, and that uh, is never going to happen they can't even agree to cut two and a half percent over ten years so it it's just uh, it's a laughable joke and we've seen in the stock market I said this for the longest time they're not going to cut anything they have no intention of cutting anything they're going to run this train off the tracks that's their intent they intend to default on the debt and collapse the economy uh, now you can see here on the Dow as I mentioned before, I'm shorting the Dow, so I'm well. I'm shorting some stocks. I'm entering into shorts on stocks, so I'm watching the stocks very care carefully, closely. And you can see we've got this reverse type of flag formation, which is very, very strange. It actually indicates increasing volatility. If you remember, in the 2008 uh, drop, we had huge up days, huge down days, and uh, but you can see that uh, while they came and punished the metals today uh, they raced the stocks up and uh, a really good example of that is just one stock Groupon uh, this is basically uh, a dot-com bubble stock it has a market cap of about four billion dollars uh, and it's it uh, closed up today about eight percent a lot of the gamblers thought that uh, this was going to take off like some of the other ones have Netflix LinkedIn as this money that Bernanke is printing sloshes around these markets uh, uh, this gigantic casino looking for a home and trying to find the next big uh, boom which you can see immediately turned into the next big bust as Groupon which went up 8% today crashed 26% overnight and uh, you can see that in the chart uh, so uh, we just have this kind of madness going on uh, it's way way down below here so we're talking about on the monthly that uh, if we go to even the three month so you can see that it gave back all of these gains in an overnight session this is the kind of thing that you see when you have someone like chairman Bernanke uh, justifying uh, the insanity of his policies and that uh, he was called out a number of times this was absolutely uh, a disgrace uh, for the nation to have the chairman of the Federal Reserve up there trying to justify the overspending of Congress and to uh, scare Congress away from cutting spending which is killing us 
and uh, obviously they're not going to cut any spending. This is a, a big show uh, and uh, they're going to continue to print money until they run this thing off the tracks. Of course that's why you have to stack silver and gold precious metals. When this smackdown is over with I can't say exactly when this is going to be over with but I'm thinking that we're nearing a bottom here for this uh, period and uh, ultimately uh, the price of gold and silver are going to skyrocket. If we look at the uh, chart that we got from uh, Zero Hedge, what's very interesting about this is you can see here that uh, gold is, well there's some very close colors so it's hard to see, but you've got gold and silver here and you can see them quite clearly here in the 1979-80 run-up and so you have gold there, silver there, and silver dropping out of sight, gold kind of meandering along and then taking off. But if I'm correct, I think that this right here is the silver and uh, if that's the case, there's something wrong with these calculations because we know nominally silver is still below that $50 price. Uh, down around $30, silver is actually only 60% of this price spike. So just based on the action of other uh, prices, if silver is down here, for silver to catch up to these other prices, then silver needs to go fourfold. So just for silver to be even with these other prices right now, silver needs to be at about $120 uh, just on a relative basis to those other things. So there's a tremendous upside potential to go for silver. Uh, it's becoming, uh, the stocks are getting thinner and thinner at the uh, Atmex, Gainesville, Provident. The coins I like, the Perth coins, uh, there are very, very few available. So I think that uh, once those are nearly gone, that usually marks a bottom. At least that's what I've noticed in the past. And uh, at some point here very soon, I think we're going to start to rally and rally hard. And we'll talk to you next time.